Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Who the fridge doesn't love Batman? Next to Mickey Mouse, Homer Simpson, and a few others, he's one of the biggest icons in entertainment history, taking on and even made himself popular in every medium possible. Comics, TV shows, movies, games, Batman did it all and did it amazingly in all. Well, almost. But anyways, this one in particular though is actually a movie that came from the acclaimed animated series of the 90s. So will this be as strong and fine as Bruce Wayne's lifestyle, or is this just one of Joker's tricks? Let's find out. The Story This may be based on the animated series, but don't let that fool you. This actually has the same intensity and serious tone as the Christopher Nolan trilogy. Every element you need in a Batman story can pretty much be found here. You got the detective angle where Batman has to figure out some murders done by what's known as the Phantasm, and also the superhero angle where they intertwine with some major action scenes. But it doesn't end there. The most interesting element of the story would have to be its own spin on how Bruce Wayne developed the Cape Crusader. Yeah, yeah, we all heard of his training with Ra's al Ghul as a kid and stuff, but this one tells a much different tale, where Bruce is an adult just entering in the world of crime fighting while falling in love with a girl named Andrea, and little by little we see where the elements of Batman come from. Sounds simple but executes it in a matter that's very complex that not only connects it very well to the main story of the movie, but also to many other elements to the Batman lore. Not to mention that the movie goes all out in the action scenes. It doesn't hold back just because it's animated. It has the same high flying, exploding, and crime fighting action you'd get from the live action movies. It even goes as far as having a death count. That's when you know the movie means business. People might find it weird that it comes from a cartoon out of all places, but this actually holds a great example of how a Batman story should be handled. The Animation I'll give it this. For what they did with the animation, it's pretty good in their own merit. Since it keeps the exact same style as the cartoon, they keep the design a lot like a simple comic book, where the characters put emphasis on their shapes and they don't have any depth on them at all, looking completely flat. But they did put it in good use since any hint of shadow on them is just completely black. As for Gotham itself, it's very simplified like the characters, but it does feel very big. As the action movie it's supposed to be, it gives the audience a good sight of Gotham from many different angles and even brings us to new places in the city like the Gotham World's Fair. But in movies like this, the true highlight comes from the action scenes, and Mask of the Phantasm definitely delivers. It brings the audience on the edge and really makes it intense while, like I said before, doesn't hold back on the risk factor with guns and actual deaths. It also helps that the movie is covered with dark and gritty colors to complement the tone. There's no denying that the animation here is just fantastic. For a TV series. As a movie, however, it's pretty underwhelming. It shows a lot, especially on the character animation, that this comes directly from the animated series, and comparing it to what others had to offer at the time, like Disney or Don Bluth or other Warner Brothers films, the quality looks subpar. Now, I'm not saying what they've done is bad. In fact, generally, it looks good, and it suits Batman pretty well. And since it does belong to the series, it makes it more excusable. Not the greatest quality, but it does give Batman a good look. The Characters It's easy to just bring up characters that already developed who they are for the filmmakers and plop them in their movie. But the guys behind Mask of the Phantasm took these characters, along with their new ones, to a whole new level. With Bruce Wayne, we often see his romantic side with other girls, mostly with Catwoman, but not in a sense that made Batman who he is today. In fact, it doesn't really mix well for Bruce. 
It's not easy for him to have a happy life with a lover while simultaneously being the Dark Knight because he vowed his parents to live a life of justice. Then we have Batman's girl, Andrea Beaumont. At one point, she did fall in love with Bruce Wayne. But as the movie progresses, the reasons to why things didn't work out between the two and her family's connections become clearer, plus indicating how she feels about him now. And then there's the Phantasm, a pretty interesting villain whom I'm surprised doesn't make an appearance in other Batman incarnations afterwards. Well, maybe not a villain, but more of a vigilante that acts like death going out to kill mob bosses. And of course, this wouldn't be Batman without a familiar villain into the mix, which in this one is the Joker. Even if he doesn't appear a lot in this, he does play an important role in the movie. And I think that's what I love about the characters. Each and every single one of them play a crucial part in the film. Even the guys from the mob have a point to all this and some are barely in it for five minutes. With so much depth and development from all the old and new ones, this is exactly what I'm looking for in terms of characters. This'll sound crazy, but not only is this one of the most underrated Batman films, but also one of the best Batman films, next to The Dark Knight and the 1989 Tim Burton version. Mask of the Phantasm may not have the best quality in terms of animation, but the writing is top-notch with an epic story, very detailed characters, and intense action scenes. If you're a Batman fan of any kind, rather it be a DC enthusiast, or just someone who likes some of the movies, then you should definitely check it out. You don't even have to watch the 90s animated series to understand it all. It really works as itself. And as it is, it earns itself the Animat Seal of Approval. By the way, instead of the usual song I put in to show the ratings, I decided to give this one a special version. It's about how Batman's an orphan. Darkness. No parents. Continue darkness. More darkness. Get it? The opposite of light. Black hole. Curtains drawn. In the basement. Hey guys, this is Animat. Now just by watching this movie, it really did brought out the Batman fan in me, and it really was awesome. Now, I'm not going to consider myself a huge Batman fan, like, I don't really read a lot of the comics, and it's been a while since I've seen the 90s animated series, but I will say that I am a casual Batman fan. Like, I really like watching the movies, um, now including this one, uh, I like playing the Arkham games, and when it was on TV, I liked to watch the 60s series with Adam West. Now, that is the true definition of campy fun. But, now that Batman is over, it's time to move on with the next animated film in the animation hat. Oh, and by the way, if you guys have a suggestion of an animated film you would like me to review and I would put in the animation hat, then write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. Alright, so let's get to it. You know, we're actually, you know, we're so, so, so far we got two, hold on. We got two, an oh, there we go. We got two Animat Seal of Approvals in a row. Let's see if we can get a third one. With the next animated film will be... Holy crap. This one. Hmm. This is interesting. What if I tell you that we're going to be entering into another world with this animated film? <laughs> 